I've seen these jelly cakes popping up everywhere recently, usually with some sort of nature aesthetic. Some have flowers, some have mushrooms, and then there's these really elaborate aquatic ones, which is what we're gonna try and make today. It involves a little bit of baking, not a little bit, a lot of baking, a lot of sculpting, a lot of painting, and then at the end of it all, you have a really nice treat. Hopefully. So pour yourself your favorite drink, put on your favorite playlist because we're here, we're gonna be here because we're gonna be here for a long run. We might as well make it a good, mine as well, mine as well. We're gonna be here for a long time, so we might as well make it a good time. I'm thinking Disney music. Disasters in the air. ready to know what the people know. My arms will hold you, keep you safe and warm. I can already picture the perfect afternoon. All right, so let's get started. First, you wanna preheat your oven. I'm doing mine at 180 degrees Celsius because that's what my cake mix calls for. And then you wanna make your basic cake mix. You could use a box cake mix or you can make it from scratch. It's totally up to you. I want to start with something really simple because it's going to get really complicated later so I want to ease myself into it. But feel free to use whatever works for you according to your own skill level and your own dietary requirements. Next we're gonna make the chocolate ganache. All you need for this is some dark chocolate chips and some whipping cream. Over medium heat, warm it up until it comes to a little bubble. Then turn off the heat and add the cream to your bowl of chocolate and just mix it up. You wanna make this now because it's gonna need to sit in the fridge and thicken for about 30 minutes. To check if your cakes are done, just grab a toothpick and poke it in the center. If it comes out clean, they're done. Okay, we're just gonna let them cool down first. Boop, 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 so satisfying. So while the cakes are cooling behind me, I'm gonna work on some of the little details. You can make whatever you want to put in your water or you can have nothing at all in your water. It's up to you. I'm gonna be using some aquatic molds I got on Amazon and I'm also gonna be using some white fondant. And for some of them, I'm gonna add some food coloring to it just to make them into a different color. Alternatively, you can make these with melted white chocolate and food coloring or even jelly, or you can not use molds at all. You can just sculpt it by your hand. It's totally up to you. Kind of looks like Play-Doh and it feels like Play-Doh too. So it's really fun to work with. After you've got your fondant into the mold, you wanna pop it into the fridge because this makes it easier to pop it out and it's also easier to work with it later. So to paint them, I just have a little bowl of water and then I have different colors of food coloring. And then just get your brush nice and wet. I'm kind of trying to make it look a little bit glossy and shiny. The water helps to do that. The less water you add, the more pigmented it will be. So if you just want it to be light, then add more water. Carefully slice your cake so that it's flat on top and then grab your ganache, which should be nice and thick by now, and layer them. Then you wanna randomly cut out pieces so that it begins to look like a jagged rock. This is really therapeutic. I feel like Edward Scissorhands. So I'm just taking some of the pieces that I cut off and mixing in some of the ganache. Spread your ganache all over your cake. If you're finding this difficult, just pop it in the fridge for a few minutes because you'll find it's a lot easier to work with when it's cold. Now taking some white icing, or you could also use melted white chocolate, or you could use condensed milk, just something white. You just wanna put on some little highlights.
Take a springform pan and fasten it around your cake rock. Seal it up with tape and wrap it. Then place a plastic lining inside. You should also tape this to the pan too, but I made a mistake. All right, so now we're gonna mix up the jelly. So you wanna use 120 grams of gelatin with one and a half cups of cold water. So we're just gonna mix that together until there's no clumps. And you're just gonna let that sit and thicken for about 15 minutes. In a saucepan, you wanna bring 600 milliliters of water and 150 grams of sugar to a boil. And then also add in two tablespoons of lemon juice. All right, so since the gelatin is a little bit yellow tinted, I'm just adding one drop of blue food coloring so that it gives a really nice teal looking water. Oh, that's pretty. I wish it could stay like that. You just wanna wait for your jelly to cool down about to room temperature so that you can pour it over the cake without melting anything. All right, so once your jelly has cooled down, it's still not that thick, it's okay. Just carefully spoon it in. Okay, nothing's coming out, it's staying inside, so I think we're good. <gasps> no! This isn't working. All right, it is the next day now. I left it in the fridge overnight. You can leave it for about four hours to overnight. I decided to do the full overnight because I was a little bit worried to do it too early and then it doesn't work out and then I wasted six hours because I've made that mistake before and I definitely wasn't ready to do it again. So I'm ready to open the fridge and see what comes out. Oh. Interesting. Whoa. What the heck? It seems like the fondant has melted into some of the water, which I don't mind because water always has a reflection of what's above it or around it. But as you can see here, this the white completely melted for some reason and then all the food coloring melted off. Whoa, I, it looks like the fish completely like expanded and melted. <laughs> oh no, I'm scared. <laughs> also, I should have taped the bottom better because the jello started to float out. As soon as I put it in the fridge, it started to thicken so that it could stop itself from pouring out. But yeah, just make sure you tape it really well. So I think I'm going to first cut off the excess gelatin that came out around it. Ooh, there's a lot of jelly. Okay. Oh, interesting. Whoa! It looks like something. What? It's melting out. Oh god. So the fish is bleeding out. Because there's a crack where I did the second layer. Next we're gonna make the tree. So you wanna grab a bunch of digestive cookies. Just add them to a bowl and then grab your weapon of choice. What do I wanna smash it with? I think this will be good. And then just smash them. All right, once you get it into very fine pieces, you're gonna put a little bit in a bowl. All right, so we got lighter green trees, darker green trees, and this will be used as the sand. Okay, 
Okay, so just cover your beautiful cake that definitely isn't falling apart before your eyes that you spent six hours on, but actually the top is looking good. So yeah, we want to continue that and we want to cover it. And then we're going to go in with a dark green color. <laughs> the starfish are bigger than the trees. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Oh, maybe it's moss. This is moss. This is not trees. This is moss. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're just going to add some of the brown one to the bottom for the sandy shoreline. Okay. And then I'll just remove this. Beautiful. Then with a very thin paintbrush and some white icing color, I'm just going to paint some very fine water lines. All right, so this is the complete cake. I would rate this like a seven out of 10. There's a few things I would have done differently. One, I would have mixed the food coloring into the fondant instead of doing white fondant with food coloring on top of it because most of them that I did that turned completely white. Two, I wouldn't put so many things inside the bottom. I would attach them more to the rock because it seems like the ones that are attached to the rock turned out a lot better overall. Also, I would have made them smaller because they expanded inside. And then I would have taped the pan better at the bottom because since the jelly came outwards, I lost some at the top and then I had to make another layer. And you can see here where it split. I also added more fish at the second layer, which I shouldn't have because where it split is where the fondant is pouring out because the seams aren't really completely sealed. So I think I would have just made a few colorful things attached to the rock on the inside and made them very small. I think it looks really cool. I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with my first attempt. All that's left now to do is to cut into it, which I'm very nervous about because I have a feeling the fondant is gonna pour out. But let's try. It's so heavy, the cake. Do not hold it with one hand. Okay. Oh, I just had a heart attack. Whoa. It actually looks really nice in the inside. Yeah. Turned out really nice. Oh, okay. I feel like if I could, if I did this again, I could do it really well. So I hope that with my advice, you guys can also make this very easily. If you want to save yourself all the trouble, just put nothing inside and it will look amazing. Just put it on the top. But yeah, oh, I'm so happy with this. Great, I had a lot of fun making this cake with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you do give this a try, please tag me because I really wanna see your creation in how you decorate it, what you put inside, the colors you use, all of that. And I, yeah, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.